Dear colleagues, this is a hard intumescent cataract. Let us watch the steps. This is the main incision. It is a posterior limbal 2.8 millimeter incision. You can see that I am using a cotton tipped bar to support the eyeball and I am not using any tooth forceps. This is a side port on the right side of the main incision. And now, air bubble is being injected into the anterior chamber and beneath this air bubble, Tripon Blue 0.06% dye is spread over this anterior capsule. The dye doesn't get diluted if there is air bubble and staining becomes very nice within very few seconds. And now this is a bit of adrenaline to dilate the pupil further. And see the pupil is dilating to some more extent. Now the dye is washed out. The viscoelastic substance that we are using in this intumescent cataract is only hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. I have done hundreds of cases of intumescent cataracts and I have not used any cohesive viscoelastic substance. Only HPMC is enough. Now this is a side port on the left side of the main incision. And now is the time to do capsulorexis. A 26 gauge bent cystitome is taken. Let us go to a higher magnification to see in the capsulorexis. SPMC is being spread over the corneal epithelium. It improves visibility. And now this is 26 gauge bent needle. The capsule is incised at the center and a C flap is made. You can see some turbid fluid comes out, indicating this is a hypermature cataract. And now a small rexis is done at this stage. I don't make any attempt of a large rexis at this time. Now I use a Simco cannula to remove some cortical lens matter and reduce the intralenticular pressure. You can use bimanual irrigation aspiration and remove some cortical lens matter so that the intralenticular pressure goes down drastically. I am going through the side ports to re remove some more cortical matter from the opposite equator. And now enough of cortical matter has been removed. Viscoelastic substance is now injected into the anterior chamber. A vana scissor is now taken and a small nick is done like this. A uterta forceps is taken capsular tag is healed with the uterta and the small rexis is now enlarged to an optimum sized capsular rexis. You can see a hard brown nucleus so I am making a large rexis. Yes, this rexis is adequate. And now we don't need any hydrodissection, you just have to go into the eye with the tip of the FACO handpiece. The machine being used is Oatly Cataract 3 and it has got a beautiful easy tip. It holds the nucleus very nicely, very firmly. And see how I am going to chop this nucleus. I am going into the substance of the nucleus, traveling through the nucleus towards the opposite equator like a submarine. And here 
H of the nucleus and this is I'm going to turning it 180 degree going to a deeper plane and I separate the nucleus into two halves now each heminucleus is large so I'm dividing this heminucleus into three parts yes if it is a large nucleus if we make only two parts it's not enough we should divide each heminucleus into three parts now I'm going to emulsify these three pieces one by one the FECO power that I'm using is 85 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and I am emulsifying the pieces at the iris plane yes now I come to this piece go into the substance of the nucleus and chop it like this must remember this that this piece is now free floating and we must this is the other bigger piece and I'm dividing it into I attempted to divide it but it didn't happen so I am just gradually in a controlled way emulsifying it and removing it the patient became uncooperative at this stage and it was difficult to keep focus keep centration now I have, see I have removed the chopper to to make the anterior chamber more stable if we remove the chopper leakage through the side port stops or decreases and the anterior chamber becomes more stable and we can easily emulsify the last piece I would recommend that you decrease your vacuum and flow rate during the emulsification of last piece and now see there is a very small nuclear fragment one or two which was engaged at the side port it has been pushed into the anterior chamber by viscoelastic substance now I remove these two pieces first by Simco and then I remove the cortex many colleagues ask me why I use Simco cannula actually uh, my assistant is ready with Simco and I just hand over the FECO handpiece to him and get the SIMCO ready. Otherwise, I have to wait for about 10 seconds to remove this cortex, and within 10 seconds, sometimes this cortex is removed. So we can save a lot of time. And now the lens is being implanted under irrigation. The antechamber is kept formed by irrigating fluid and the lens is injected into the capsular bag. In this case, the leading haptic didn't go into the bag. The trailing has haptic has been sent into the bag. And now the leading haptic is dialed into the bag. Yes, now the lens has gone into the capsular bag. And this has been done by the irrigating probe. Since there is no viscoelastic substance in the capsular bag in the anterior chamber, the rest of the surgery is going to be quick. So I just hydrate the side ports and do a final lavage of anterior chamber with balanced salt solution form the anterior chamber nicely after forming the anterior chamber I check the integrity of the wounds there should not be any leakage 
from any site and then conclude the case see the main incision it is so nice there is no own burn thank you very much for your attention